Welcome to this video on Bollinger Bands strategy that you can use for trading stocks, forks, futures, commodities, options. By the way, I think we'll do a follow up on how to use Bollinger Bands with options. Super powerful. But for today, I want to make it universal for everybody trading every market and really pretty much every time frame as long as there's enough volume and liquidity to support that time frame. So with Bollinger Bands, they're an expansion of volatility. I'm not going to go through the basics. You can look at that on Google and check it out if you want to see the formulas and so forth. Um, real quickly, just because I know I'll get this question and it is a good one. They'll say, Barry, what uh, parameters are you using? And here's what I use. It's right up here. The time frame can vary, but the key is uh, 20 periods and two standard deviations. So pretty standard. Some people use 14. If you want to use 14, God bless you and the horse you rode in on, that's fine. <laughs> it doesn't, um, it, it does matter, but um, it, this will work for either one. So let's get to the strategy that I promised. So it's pretty gal darn simple. And then I want to give you a backup strategy as well. So really today you're getting two strategies in one. The first one is super simple and this is what people really look for most of the time and what they're looking for is the bands to expand away from each other. Well first of all contract. So step one is the contraction of the Bollinger Bands here where they get, oh I missed my Come on now, Barry, get your act together. We want the arrow. There we go. So we got the upper Bollinger Band going down. First of all, they're getting kind of tight, right? And this one, we also, or yeah, we want this one going down, this one going up. All right, so that defines the contraction. But that can go on for a while. As you can see, we've got it going on here, 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 here. Then we're looking for the, uh, if we're going along, if we're going to go up, if we're going to be bullish, we want to see the upper Bollinger Band going up. Now, I prefer if the lower Bollinger Band is also going down, but it can be flat, and I found that it works pretty good if it's going flat. I will not take the trade. Here is the line in the sand, though. I will not take the trade long if the lower Bollinger Band is also going up. So this, the lower one, the one on the opposite side of your trade, must either be going down or at the very least flat. Okay, that is a deal breaker for me in these trades. And then this is like the quintessential uh, Bollinger Band squeeze. We are looking to get a nice big unidirectional move because Bollinger Bands measure, well, volatility, expansion of contraction of volatility. It's two standard deviations is what I use here over a 20 period of time. And so we're looking for, you know, a nice big move. I usually just, um, on these, by the way, when we get a big Half cycle, that's a half cycle move, by the way. Be happy to share with you my cycle indicator a little later, or how to get it at least, uh, for free. So this is awesome. Now, when this happens, I'm watching, uh, this is called riding the band. I believe John Bollinger calls that riding the band. And then I look and I wait for a couple of things. So first of all, let's relate this to volume. You know, I've got volume listed here. So a good sign is when you get a Bollinger band squeeze breakout, on big volume. So that shows that there's strength in that direction, weight behind it, orders behind it, people committed to buying behind it. So that adds to the probability of the trade. All right, and then volume just kind of uh, evens out and that's okay, that's perfectly fine here. And it's writing, by, writing the band, writing the band, and then we get a cycle high and it does not touch the upper band. That's what I look for for exits where, okay, now the market, the volatility of it is slowing down. That energy of that initial impulse of that half cycle is not sustaining, right? It's waning as opposed to sustaining. And then we've got our volume and our volume now is, let's draw our little lines here. I love having these little triangles. Okay, so you could see there right in about there doesn't uh, touch the upper Bollinger Band. Um, the volume is coming down. It's retreating. And so I'm, I'll just take it out right there. You know, even if the Merck like here, okay, it comes back down, touches the lower Bollinger Band, goes back up, touches the upper. I'm not going to wait through all of this. Okay. Because, you know, then I'd have to 
potentially get back all this money. That's like half of the money that I made. No, 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 no. I'm going to get out early, get in early, get out early. And then um, actually I'll do another video on that too. I'm getting all these video ideas as I'm talking here. Uh, people saying you got to stay in for the long haul. And that's not necessarily true. In fact, I'm definitely going to do a video on that one. So I just want to make a uh, unidirectional money. I don't want to get back much money and get out at a really good time and place. All right, so that is your meta pattern for a great Bollinger Band squeeze. They're good risk reward trades. I don't want it to get back below the 15 EMA. So as far as stops go, the very worst I would allow this to do would be to go down below here, this uh, the cycle low. Uh, but nah, definitely going to not let it break the 15 EMA. And again, with these, when they're very aggressive like this, I mean, look at that. You could almost use, um, I think you could actually use a one bar trailing stop. Never breaks the low of that bar, that bar, that bar, that bar, that bar, that bar. There. Now, it doesn't break the low of any of these bars. So my, my gosh. And that is like your optimal Bollinger Band expansion trade. Okay, it's a, it's out of a squeeze, but we're really looking for such volatility, such a big fast move in a short period of time that we don't even retrace below the low of the previous bar. Okay, so now what if it doesn't do this? Because they don't all, I wish they did, but you know, my daughter wants a horse or a pony, but she's not gonna get that either. And I'm not gonna get these kind of trades all the time. So when this happens, ka -ching. Excellent. But when they don't, there is a way to salvage the trade. And let me show you that. Okay, so now here we have another Bollinger Band squeeze trade. Didn't work out quite as good as the other one. Not bad, but definitely not as ideal. So we got our squeeze. First, first thing, by the way, is again, the Bollinger Bands must be tightly wound together there. The upper and lower Bollinger Bands need to be very close together. That's step one. Step two, the upper band goes up if we're going long, and the lower band ideally goes down, could be flat. Now in this one you'll notice, first of all, we don't have big volume. Uh, it's bigger than some of the average volume before. It's not huge. That's okay. So it goes up, 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 and does not make a big move up. So again, we're okay, but not a big winner like the last one. Remember I said I didn't, I don't want it to go down back below the 15 EMA. So here's how to salvage or, you know, follow through and make some more money, even if these initial impulses aren't real big. Look for the price to come back to that 15 EMA. By the way, that's what the black line is, 15 EMA. My green line here is the 50 SMA. Definitely will not let it come back to that. So I use this as a trailing stop. As long as everything else is looking good, and by the way, you do need more than just Bollinger Bands and moving averages and, and volume to do these trades. We're looking for, I look in my methodology for five uncorrelated energies of money flow. So here's a couple, but today is, we're just focusing on this. All right, so then I look for a retrace, and it's your basic kind of trend retrace pattern. So move up, retrace the 15 EMA, move up, hit the upper Bollinger Band again. Now, hitting the upper Bollinger Band is indicating strength. And therefore, again, if it didn't reach the upper Bollinger Band, then I would say, oh, I'm done, I'm out. No longer trading this Bollinger Band trade. But it does, and so that means strength up, weakness down. Strength up, and now weakness down on a retrace, really just consolidates right back to the 15 EMA. We get volume this time. Okay, really good volume. So awesomeness. And then the puppy dog goes up one more time. Boom. Okay, awesomeness again, hitting the upper Bollinger Band. Strength up, buying in strength, uh, shorting on weakness or just profit taking. That's, we want to trade in the direction of the dominant energy of the market. So the dominant energy is up weakness down, strength up, weakness down, strength up, weakness down. So we're trading on the right side of the dominant energy of the market. We get one more uh, hurrah here, but again, does not touch the upper Bollinger Band. So this is not strength up and therefore I'm done. I'm out of the trade. Also notice our volume is very low here. No more sustaining of that. In fact, big volume comes on the downside when we get uh, this candle here. All right. 
So that's it. Nice little uh, pattern. They don't always have to go to the moon right away. You can look at these Bollinger Band uh, strategies or this Bollinger Band strategy as a trend continuation one where the initial Bollinger Band squeeze where it pops out is the uh, showing the strength of a new trend. So check it out. See how you like it. Um, I like it a lot works very, very well for me. Feel free to uh, oh add my uh, cycle indicator to it. Go over to indicatorwebinar.com. Recorded webinar there. I used to do it live, but um, so many people wanted it. Different time zones, different countries. I said, all right, I'll just record it, and then you can go watch it whenever you want to. And the cool thing about that is it's an indicator that you can use on any charting platform. In fact, it's already on your charting platform. But I modify a common indicator and turn it into, I repurpose it for something it wasn't originally intended, and that is to measure times. So when to nail a swing low, when to nail a swing high. It works really, really good for it. It takes about an hour for me to show you how to get it set up in charts and how to trade it. But that's what it does, and that's why it works so well with this and every other strategy, because it gives you the exact timing for swing highs and lows. So indicatorwebinar.com, my gift to you, absolutely free. Go, enjoy, and have a great week trading.